Yeah, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. We thank you, Abba, for a beautiful day that you've given us. Another day in the land of the living. You are wonderful. You are awesome. You are holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is full of your glory. And we thank you for sending us King Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross, King Jesus. Thank you for shedding your blood so that our sins could be forgiven as far as the east is from the west. Like a thick cloud of the skies, you have blotted out all of our transgressions. So we confess our sins to you, knowing that when we confess our sins to you, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgive us for breaking your commandments. Forgive us for thinking things, saying things, doing things that were not perfect, for you are holy. Okay, we can't uh, truly grasp how holy you are because you are perfect and we are imperfect, but we know that we have a Savior, we have an advocate, and we plead the blood of Jesus as we enter into the throne room of glory, asking and begging for mercy in our time of need. So help us right now. Set us back on solid ground if we have fell. Give us the strength to endure. Fill us, Ruach HaKodesh, with your presence. Fill us with a fresh and a new anointing. Keep that flame uh, burning bright in us. Keep that light shining bright in us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to dwell in us because we have confessed you as Lord and Savior, King Jesus. We thank you for the power that enables us to walk in a way that is pleasing in your sight. So lead us, Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us in your ways and in your truth right now as we open up your word to see what thus saith the Lord. May we understand the signs of the times and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Your kingdom to come, your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, the mighty name above all names, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Well, thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open. Everything will change. And, you know, I'm just going to double down. I'm going to double down on the truth, okay? I'm going to double down on the truth. I'm going to double down on the truth, okay? I'm, gonna, I'm, go I'm going all in because uh, the truth will endure forever. And uh, the writing is on the wall. I mean, it, it's like it, it, it baffles my mind, to be honest. It, it, it truly does. But then... At the same time, I understand what Jesus went through, what the prophets went through, because the more you tell the truth, the more evidence you present, it's like uh, the more people refuse to believe it. And it, uh, I, I can see uh, what Yeshua went through when he was on the earth and how he sighed when the people did not understand what he was talking about. He sighed uh, because he was, he is the truth. And yet people still didn't understand. And you know, I, I'm, I, I'm a sinner saved by grace. I, I've been declared righteous in his sight because uh, I've been born again. Uh, but I fall short of the glory of God every day. And so I'm far from perfect. I'm far from, uh, 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 uh I'm far from uh, uh, righteous. Uh, the Bible says there's no one righteous. No, not one. Uh, but God has given me the Holy Spirit because I've been born again. And because he has given me the Holy Spirit, he has given me the ability to see clearly. He has given me the ability uh, to understand, uh, just like you have been given the ability to understand and to see clearly if you abide in him and he abides in you. And uh, the reason why I'm saying all this is because of what happened today at the U.N. You see, it wasn't just Donald Trump, but it was also Emmanuel Macron. And the, the writing is on the wall. And I, I, I just don't understand how people will continue to reject what the Bible says. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I, I, I truly don't. I, I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. It's like no matter uh, uh, what I say in this video, uh, and, 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 and even though the Holy Spirit is going to present the evidence again, I'm sure, uh, and forgive me, Holy Spirit, for my lack of faith. I should have more faith that people would understand, but it's just like, it's like a, it's like a, a, a chasing my tail 
uh, if I was a dog, you know how a dog just chases its, uh, chases its tail uh, going around and around in a circle trying to catch it? It's like uh, you keep on declaring the truth, but people still won't receive it. They still won't grasp it. It's like they don't want to get it. And it just baffles my mind. But let me stop ranting because this is going to be a short video. Let, let's just go over a, a few th uh, key things about what happened at the UN today. Okay, so we know that President Trump uh, gave his his speech at the UN. Uh, many people were uh, looking for him to produce the Israeli peace plan, uh, the Trump peace plan, the deal of the century. Uh, but what he said today, I mean, uh, while it wasn't that, it was still a whole lot because uh, as we'll see, we'll see the follow up with what Emmanuel Macron said and what the Bible says, because we have to always go to what the scriptures say. And so here's the headline. Here's the headline. This is what happened. Uh, the headline for President Trump's um, UN speech today was that Trump rejects globalism. Okay. Trump rejects globalism. Let's just read uh, the first uh, sentence. Um, promoting his aggressive America first agenda, U.S. President Donald Trump delivered a sharp rebuke of global governance at the United Nations on Tuesday. I mean, this is a mouthful. This is a mouthful. This is exactly what the Bible says. Why? Why did he say this? Why did Donald Trump say that he rejects, he rebukes global governance? Why does he say that? Well, it's because the United States of America rules over all the kings of the world, just like the Bible says. I mean, I just don't understand how you can't see it. The reason why um, Donald Trump um, rebukes the New World Order, if that's what you want to call it. But if you want to be biblical, we got to call it the Fourth Beast Kingdom. The Fourth Beast Kingdom that is going to be headed by the Antichrist and the Ten Kings. That's what the New World Order is. That's what global governance is. That's when... Uh, the Antichrist takes over with the Ten Kings and they receive a kingdom to rule for one hour over the whole entire world. But the Bible tells us specifically that there's one opposition in the way. I mean, well, there's there's more than just one. It's also the restrainer, which is the Holy Spirit uh, dwelling inside the church. Uh, so God is also uh, the number one person who is um, delaying uh, the fourth beast kingdom rise. But uh, uh, the Bible specifically tells us in the, in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, that Babylon the Great is uh, the whore that reigns over all the kings of the earth. And uh, Babylon the Great is the opposition that stands in the way of the new world order taking over. And uh, again, the New World Order, which is modern colloquialism, a term uh, in our modern day and age, but the Bible tells us it's the fourth beast kingdom. Um, that New World Order does not come onto the scene until Babylon the Great is destroyed. Look at what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 17. Okay, so here. Uh, I'm doubling down, okay? I'm tripling down. I'm, I'm quadrupling down. I'm, I'm going all in because this is what the Bible says. And the evidence continues to declare the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, now look at what the Bible says. Okay, Revelation 17, the woman on the beast. Okay, so John sees a woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast. And this woman has a name on her forehead, verse 5. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, so uh, when John sees this woman who has the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, uh, the Bible says that this woman sits upon many waters. Verse 1 says that uh, the whore, which is Babylon the Great, sits upon many waters. And 
uh, the waters that Babylon the Great sits upon are defined in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, as this. And he saith unto me, The waters which ye saw where the whore sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay? And furthermore, in verse 18, Revelation chapter 17, verse 18, he, he goes further and he says, And the woman which ye saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Okay? So Babylon the Great reigns over the kings of the earth, and Babylon the Great reigns over the peoples, the multitudes, the nations, and the tongues of the earth, meaning the inhabitants of the world, which is exactly what you see here in verse 2. Okay, Babylon the Great is charged with committing fornication with the kings of the earth and making all the inhabitants of the world drunk with the wine of her fornication. Verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So we see the same thing repeated. Okay, we got the kings uh, who commit fornication with Babylon the Great, and we have the inhabitants of the earth that have been made drunk with the wine of Babylon the Great's fornication. And right here in verse uh, 15, we see the same thing. Uh, the waters where the whore sits, which is Babylon the Great, uh, Babylon the Great is the whore, and she sits upon the inhabitants of the world, because the waters are the peoples, the multitudes, the nations, and the tongues. And in verse 18, she also reigns over the kings of the earth. And the woman who thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So, I mean, can you please see what the Bible says? I mean, I plead with you, by the name of Jesus Christ, can you please humble yourself and receive what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. Babylon the Great rules over the kings of the earth and Babylon the Great rules over the inhabitants of the world. Okay? Now, if you want to see the evidence from a secular source, let's go to an article. Okay, you could do this Google search yourself, but I just put, who is the most powerful um, nation in the world? Okay? I said, I put in the Google search, uh, who is the most powerful country in the world? And uh, every article that I pulled up had the same results. Okay, so here goes one. The top 10 most powerful countries in the world, 2018. Let's go down the list. Number 10, the UAE. Number 9, Saudi Arabia. Number 8, Israel. Number 7, Japan. Number 6, France. Number 5, Germany. Number four, the UK. Number three, China. Number two, Russia. Number one, the United States. Okay, let's read what it says about the United States. The United States is the most powerful country in the world. Okay, so if you're the most powerful country in the world, that means that you're reigning over all the other kings of the earth. And that means that you have influence over all the inhabitants of the world. Uh, it has the largest economy in the, wor in the world, thanks in large part to its massive entertainment and media industry. The economy in California alone produces $2.5 trillion. Assuming California was a country, that number would have made the California economy one of the top six in the world. Imagine that. So just California alone would put... Um, California's economy in the top six of all the countries in the whole entire world, okay? I mean, it, 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 I, okay, let me just keep on reading. In terms of political influence, the U.S. is unparalleled. A founding member of the United Nations, the U.S. plays a huge role in almost all international issues, especially ones regarding global security. Despite being currently led by a dude named Donald Trump, the U.S. remains a powerhouse in the international community. But respect for the U.S. government takes a hit every time Trump sends out a tweet. The U.S. has the most powerful military in the world. It has the most modernized and sophisticated military weapon systems and possesses a huge number of nuclear warheads. And the U.S. isn't shy about showing its military power to the world. One reason why some countries often accuse the U.S. of meddling with international affairs too much. There is a very good chance that the list of the top 10 most powerful countries in the world will remain the same in 2018. 
one or two from the bottom five countries might get replaced with a different country, but the top five countries are likely locks to hold their current position. So we see <laughs> that bar none, the United States is the most powerful country in the world. It has the largest economy in the world. <laughs> I mean, okay. You see, I, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it's funny, but then it's not funny because it's tragic. It, it's tragic. I just don't understand how people get this idea that Babylon the Great is somebody else when all the evidence always points to America. I just, I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. I really don't. I mean, do, I mean, do people read the Bible? Do people read the Bible? I just don't get it. Okay, but and if you read the Bible, do you ask the Holy Spirit to teach you? The whole chapter of Revelation chapter 18 is all about the downfall of the world's economies when Babylon the Great is destroyed in one hour and in one day. We just read that the United States has the largest economy in the world. Okay, the largest economy in the world is located in the United States of America. I don't see the Vatican here. I truly don't. I didn't even see it in the top 10. I didn't even see Italy, which is where Rome is at. I didn't see it in the top 10. Okay, I didn't see it. I don't see it. Okay, and how can you say that the Vatican, Rome, whatever you want to say, Italy, is Babylon the Great when everything that we see in our modern times refutes that notion? How can the whole world, how can all of the merchants of the earth weep and mourn over Babylon the Great and all of their merchandise no longer be traded if Babylon the Great was the Vatican? Okay, when the Vatican is not even on the top 10 list of uh, the biggest economies in the world. What type of impact would the destruction of Babylon the Great, if it were Rome, if it were the Vatican, what type of impact would it make on the world? Okay, this is this is this is humongous, my friends. This is just this is just this is humongous. God did not contain okay, God did not put the two longest chapters in the book of Revelation in regards to Babylon the Great. He didn't put he didn't dedicate two whole chapters. Revelation chapter 17 and Revelation chapter 18. Two whole chapters in the book of Revelation. Two whole chapters in the book of Revelation. He did not put this in there if this wasn't going to be a catastrophic event. Okay? He put this in the book of Revelation. Two whole chapters. Okay, he put two whole chapters dedicated to the total destruction of Babylon the Great so that the generation of the end would not miss it for those who are watching and praying. And, it, and everything points to the United States of America. Okay, because we see in Revelation chapter 17 that the ten kings are the ones who hate Babylon the Great because the ten kings cannot come to power until Babylon the Great is destroyed. Look at what the Bible says. Please, will you just please, please, uh, by the mercy, by the grace, by the living God, I adjure you to please let the Holy Spirit teach you. Please let the Holy Spirit teach you. Okay, please let him teach you. Let him teach you. Uh, 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 strip off all the preconceived notions that you have and let the Bible speak for itself. This is what the Bible says, okay? Verse 12, Revelation chapter 17. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Okay, so 
the ten kings have no kingdom as yet, meaning that they do not rule over the whole world. Okay, how come they don't rule over the whole world? Because Babylon, the great, the great city, reigns over the whole world. Verse eighteen, Revelation chapter seventeen, and the woman which you saw, which is Babylon the great, is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Okay, there could only be one superpower. There could only be one person in charge. Okay, and at the time of the end, the Bible says that the person in charge before the fourth beast kingdom takes over is the great harlot called Babylon the Great, who has reign over all the kings of the earth. Okay, and we see that because Babylon the Great has reign over all the kings of the earth, the ten kings have no kingdom yet. Okay, it's not until they destroy Babylon the Great that they receive power as kings one hour with the beast. We see that here in verse 16. Revelation chapter 17, verse 16. Look at this. Let the Bible speak for itself. Let God teach you. Help us, Holy Spirit. And the ten horns which you saw upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. So the ten horns hate the whore. They hate Babylon the great. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Okay, so we see that, the ten horns, they hate Babylon the great. And the ten horns, which are the ten kings, are the ones who destroy Babylon the great with fire. And once they destroy Babylon the great with fire, then the ten kings take over and they give all of their power, all of their strength to the beast. Okay? So until Babylon the Great is destroyed, the New World Order, which is the ten beast, I mean the ten horn kingdom with the beast, cannot take over. Okay, Babylon the Great has to be destroyed, and 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 then uh, the fourth beast kingdom, which is uh, the kingdom of the Antichrist with the ten with the ten kings. That is when they take over. So we see today that if this is the time of the end, if this is the time of the end, if this is it, okay, if, if we are at the end, if, if, if you truly believe that we are going to see Jesus face to face in our lifetime, if you truly believe that this is when everything is about to be fulfilled, if you truly believe that we are that generation who will see King Jesus come on the clouds. If you truly believe that we will be alive and we will remain until the coming of King Jesus, well, look at what the evidence says. United States President Donald Trump said that the U.S. military is more powerful than it has ever been before. And because Babylon the Great trust in her military might, God says that he is going to make an example out of Babylon the Great. Okay, we see that here in uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, which is the Old Testament, um, which is the Old Testament um, shadow, the Old Testament shadow of the New Testament fulfillment. Um, two whole chapters, two of the longest chapters in the Old Testament in regards to um, a prophecy against one nation is dedicated to ancient Babylon, which has types and shadows of Babylon the Great contained in it. And, and that's found in Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51. So both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, two of the longest continual prophecies against one nation, okay, are both in regards to Babylon. Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51 and Revelation chapter 17 and 18. In Jeremiah chapter 50, we see that the hammer of the whole earth is going to be broken. Look at this. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 23. 
How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Okay. God says that Babylon is the hammer of the whole earth. Ancient Babylon was the most mightiest kingdom because of their military power, but God destroyed them by the Medes and Persians. Likewise, Babylon the Great, which has the most powerful military in the whole world, the only nation that has ever used atomic weapons in war, okay? The nation is that that rules the seas with its aircraft carriers, the nation that has military bases scattered across the world, okay? Uh, God says that one day, okay, oh yeah, and also the nation that says it's going to reach up into heaven with the Space Force, which is also um, <laughs> in the prophecy in Jeremiah uh, chapter 50, uh, 51. It talks about how even if Babylon would reach up to heaven, let me show you, let me show that to you. Let me show that to you. Um, uh, even if Babylon would reach up into heaven, God is going to destroy her. If Babylon reaches up to the skies, Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 53, look at this. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify her strong height, yet destroyers would come from me against her, declares the Lord. Okay, so... Uh, our president, President Donald Trump, earlier this year talked about creating a space force, and that's in the works as we speak. They're going to be creating a space force, and thousands of years ago, God talked about this. God talked about this through the prophet Jeremiah, that even if Babylon were to fortify her strength in the heavens, meaning that they would be able to, you know, actually have this space force be in operation, God said it still wouldn't matter. It still wouldn't matter because God is the one who's going to descend the destroyers against her. And that's the same thing that we read about in uh, Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17 told us that, that it's God who puts it into the hearts of the ten kings to fulfill his will. Revelation chapter 17 verse 17, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. God is the one who's going to descend the destroyers against Babylon the Great just as we just read in Jeremiah chapter 51. So we see that President Donald Trump today at the UN rebuked global governance. Okay, he rebuked the Ten King Alliance. He rebuked the rule of the Antichrist. He rebuked um, the New World Order, okay, because America is first, America is Babylon the Great. America is the most proud. America is the one who rules over all the nations. America is the one who is sovereign above all nations, okay? And she hammers the whole earth through her military power, okay? And uh, Donald Trump is not going to allow, so he thinks, um, this 10-nation alliance, this 10-king alliance to stop America's dominance. But little does Donald Trump know that God has uh, bigger plans than uh, he can ever imagine because the bigger plans is the kingdom of God coming to put an end to all sin. And we see that America is being laughed at, okay? Uh, <clears throat> America is being laughed at. Uh, the Bible tells us in Revelation 17 that the 10 kings hate the whore, okay? They hate the whore. And, and that's exactly <clears throat> what we saw today at the UN. President Trump was mocked, okay, when he talked about America's dominance. Look at this. You, 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 if you haven't seen it, here goes a little clip. Look at the laughs. In less than two years, my administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country. America's so true. Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. President Trump was laughed at by world leaders at the UN. That shows you how much the Ten Kings hate Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is hated by the world. Openly laughed at now 
uh, before the governing body of the world, the UN. And look at what President uh, Macron said today. He came on after Donald Trump. And Macron at the UN rebuked President Trump's law of the strongest. Let's just read a couple uh, sentences. Uh, French President Emmanuel Macron on Tuesday urged world leaders to reject the law of the most powerful, offering a rebuke to Donald Trump's go-it-alone approach to global challenges. Macron did not refer to the U.S. president by name, but his address at the U.N. General Assembly outlined positions that were polar opposites to Trump's worldview. Some have chosen the law of the most powerful, but it cannot protect any people, said Macron, who reaffirmed his strong backing of multilateralism embodied by the United Nations and its global peace efforts. Earlier at the UN podium, Trump vowed to never surrender America's sovereignty to an unelected, unaccountable global bureaucracy and to reject the idea of globalism. Since Trump took office in 2017, the United States has ditched the Iran nuclear deal and the Paris climate deal, two international accords that France has championed. Okay. Um, also here, let me just throw in the Israeli-Palestinian a note. Touching on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the French, the French president said there was no credible alternative to the two-state solution that Trump has imperiled with his recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Okay, so we see how Emmanuel Macron is standing up to President Trump, and he's telling uh, the world leaders, uh, the Ten Kings, hint, hint, to reject the law of the most powerful. Okay, he's telling uh, the rest of the rulers of the world who have not received the kingdom yet to reject what Donald Trump is saying, to reject what the United States um, president is um, saying on the world scene. He's saying that uh, Emmanuel Macron is saying that uh, the world must become globalized and it must have uh, a central leader, a central ruler. And um, uh, <clears throat> there are many things that point to Emmanuel Macron wanting to be that central ruler. Uh, we know earlier this year that Emmanuel Macron specifically said that he wanted to bring together a 10 nation coalition. Um, impatient with German foot dragging on defense, French President Emmanuel Macron will bring together a 10 nation coalition of the willing next month designed to prepare European armed forces to take action together in emergencies and to bind Britain into military cooperation as it leaves the EU. And so uh, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, specifically wants to put together a coalition of 10 nations, 10 nations that have received no kingdom as yet, but will receive rulership with the beast for one hour. Am I saying that Emmanuel Macron is the beast? I'm not saying that, but I'm just giving you what the evidence is showing. Okay, uh, Emmanuel Macron rebuked Donald Trump today at the UN. He 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 says that the world must be governed uh, by um, a coalition of nations. There has to be a new world order. Okay, he rejects the sovereignty of the United States. He rejects the law of the strongest. He rejects. Babylon the Great, which is exactly what we see in Revelation chapter 17. Okay, Revelation chapter 17 says that Babylon the Great is in the way of the New World Order. Babylon the Great is in the way of the New World Order. We see here on this Economist magazine cover from last year when Emmanuel Macron was elected president, he's walking on water. And we see the woman upside down, dead. Okay, I've been doing, my last two teachings have been all about um, the sea and the waves roaring. And 
here we see that Emmanuel Macron is walking on water. Babylon the Great is dead, symbolized by these uh, women, by this woman's feet upside down in the water. And he's walking on the water. He comes out of the sea. Okay, uh, the beast appears out of the sea. So this symbolism is telling. Of course, the sea represents the peoples, the nations, the multitudes, and the tongues. But, uh, you know, you, we have to understand the symbology that the Economist magazine is portraying. Okay, he's, he's walking on water as the Savior, just like Jesus Christ. Okay, he, he's being portrayed as a Messiah-like figure. And he's coming up out of the sea after Babylon the Great is destroyed, which is also what we see in Revelation chapter 13. When the beast comes on the scene, he comes up out of the sea. <clears throat> Verse 1, Revelation 13, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So we see that when the beast comes on the scene, the ten horns have ten crowns, because the ten horns, which are the ten kings, have destroyed Babylon the Great, and now they have received a kingdom. Crowns represent rulership, and so now when the beast comes up out of the sea, when he makes his appearance, he makes his appearance because Babylon the Great has been destroyed. Babylon the Great has been burnt with fire. Babylon the Great has been rebuked. Okay, Babylon the Great has been rebuked and the law of the strongest has been defeated by the Ten Kings through an all-out sneak attack. An all-out sneak attack on the day of sudden destruction when Babylon the Great is surrounded from every side and God says, shoot at her, spare no arrows. Okay. You can read about that in Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51. Babylon the Great is going to be surrounded on every side. And God is going to tell the people, the ten kings, to shoot at her from every side. Spare no arrows, meaning nuclear missiles. Because Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed with a destroying wind. Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed with a destroying wind of fire. A destroying wind of fire, which is exactly what happens when nuclear weapons are are uh, unleashed. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will send against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. And that destroying wind is um, the fires of the nuclear hailstorm hail that will be unleashed upon Babylon the Great on the day of her destruction, when she is suddenly attacked, just like 9-11, just like Pearl Harbor, only this time it's going to be the whole land. The whole land of Babylon the Great is going to be wiped off the map because it's a double destruction. It's a double destruction that comes from the Ten Kings and also from God himself when he comes on the clouds. Okay, it's just, it's, it's, it's catastrophic in scope, and uh, there will be no one left alive in Babylon the Great once it's over. Okay, once it's over, Babylon the Great will be a ruinous heap, and everyone who was left behind in Babylon the Great will be dead. Thus begins the great and dreadful day of the Lord. One part of it, okay. So uh, I'm going to end this teaching. I don't want to go too on too much longer. Just wanted to highlight some things. But I pray that, you know, I pray that the evidence is, is clicking to somebody out there. I mean, I don't know what else God can do. I just, I don't know what else you have to see to understand that Babylon the Great is America. I mean, <laughs> if this is it, if this is the end of the age, I mean, there's only one candidate. I mean, I just don't understand how you could say any other country fits. I, do, I don't get it. I just don't get it. it. It just really pains my heart. It hurts my soul because look at what happened today. M Macron, he's not coming against the Vatican. He's not coming against Saudi Arabia. He's not coming against Mecca. He's not coming against the Kaaba. Okay. He's coming against America. He's rebuking 
the leader of the free world. He's rebuking the most powerful country in the world. Revelation chapter 17 tells us that Babylon the Great rules over the whole world. I just don't understand how you can say any other thing except that Babylon the Great is America. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. And and forgive me for my ranting, but you know, I just don't understand it. It just it just doesn't compute in my mind. It just doesn't compute. I just don't get it. Oh. And it just it just hurts my heart because I wanna I know there's gonna be people out there, well, they're gonna they're, they're gonna they're gonna double down. You're you're gonna double down and say, no, it can't be America. <laughs> you see, it 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 is like this. It's like this. <laughs> Just bear with me. Let me let me just pull up this video. I love it. I love I love this video because it, it encapsulates everything about America and its citizens. It's it's the it's the Homer Simpson clip. America can't be destroyed. Uh, we're as powerful as ancient Rome uh, uh, by uh, Homer Simpson. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I got to find it. Um. Hold on, let me let me find it right quick. Got it. Here we go. America can't collapse. We're as powerful as ancient Rome. Let's look at this clip right quick. I'm gonna end this teaching. Uh, look at Homer. America can't collapse. We're as powerful as ancient Rome. I mean, does that not speak of the attitude of most Americans? I mean, wh where is your citizenship at? Is your citizenship in heaven, or is your citizenship still in this earth? You see, that's what I think. People are so tied to this earth that they just can't under, they can't fathom that American, America could be destroyed. So it can't be America, but it, it could be the Vatican. The Vatican can be destroyed. It, it could be Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia could be destroyed, but it, it, it can't be America. It just can't be America. America cannot be Babylon the Great. Even though all the evidence points to America being Babylon the Great, it just can't be it. It cannot be America. America can't collapse. We're as powerful as ancient Rome. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it's just mind boggling. You know, it's, it's mind boggling, you know, but you know, people have their patriotic ties and don't get me wrong. I love America, but my citizenship is in heaven. Okay. I'm, 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 uh, I'm looking for the savior. And the good news is that when it happens, we're going to be out of here. Okay, we're going to be out of here. That should give you even the more oomph to go out and spread the good news. Go out and spread the gospel. Because look, when, when Babylon the Great is destroyed, there's a rapture. The rapture happens at the same time. Look at what it says in Reve Revelation chapter 18, um, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. That's the rapture. When Babylon the Great is destroyed, the rapture happens because it's all tied up in the day of sudden destruction. The day that comes like a thief in the night. The day that comes suddenly, instantly. If you're not ready, you're going to be swept away in the judgment. But if you're ready, you're going to hear the voice and you're going to be caught up unto God and to his throne. We're going to meet King Jesus in the clouds when he descends in the air to come and get us. And we're going to be taken to the Father's house. We're going to escape from all the plagues. Not even one plague is going to touch us. You see, so you don't have to fear the destruction that's going to come suddenly. But that should give you even the more oomph to share the gospel if you live in America to those who you know don't know him so that they can be spared from this terrible time that's about to come. From this terrible time that's going to come with Emmanuel Macron openly rebuking Donald Trump at the UN. Emmanuel Macron is openly rebuking America's sovereignty. Emmanuel Macron is openly rebuking Trump's law of the strongest. And yet Donald Trump, he rejects globalism. He rejects global governance. And you heard the reaction from 
the leaders of the world. The leaders of the world are laughing because they know that America's time is short. Not much time left, my friends. The day of sudden destruction is going to come swiftly. And if you know Jesus Christ, you'll be spared. But if you don't know him, this is what you have to do today, right now. Harden not your heart. Humble yourself. Call out to him. Say, Lord Jesus, save me a sinner. I believe that you paid the price, that you died on the cross, that you were buried and that you rose again on the third day. And that you said, if I call upon you, I will be saved. So I confess with my, my, with my mouth that you are Lord, King Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God has risen you from the dead. So today, if you sincerely say a prayer similar to that, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he has risen from the dead, you shall be saved. All you have to do is mean it from your heart and God will give you eternal life, forgiveness of sins, and your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you will never be ashamed. But the choice is yours. I love you. God bless you. King Jesus is coming soon. I pray that you're ready. And I pray that if you were on the fence about who Babylon the Great is, I pray that the Holy Spirit is ministering to you to, re to receive the continual evidence that Babylon the Great is none other than the United States of America. Help us to understand your truth, Holy Spirit. Amen.